Hey, what's up, everybody? Happy Sunday to you. Glad you're taking this time out to get the word. This is our tag time for this week. We're in middle October as we go on through the the rest of this year. 2020 is coming uh, almost to an end. We're getting down to the end of it. A lot of people are glad and excited about that because of all the stuff that's happened. But uh, for me and mine, it's been a good year, and I expect it'll be a great year for you and yours as well. So just want to welcome you all. Of course, again, this is our tag time, which is for our 6th to 12th graders. God has a word for you. He's a word for me that he wants to share. And so that's what we're going to get into as God leads us in Jesus' name. So last week, we talked a little bit about prayer. What did I say prayer was? Prayer is our communication or prayer is us talking to God. So we uh, have an opportunity as believers in Jesus Christ, as children of God, we have an opportunity to speak to God, to talk to him. We have an opportunity to talk to God about things that are going good in our life. We have opportunity to talk to him about things that are not going as good as we want them to be at the time. And so we talked a little bit about that last week and we looked at a scripture in the Old Testament that showed us that while lots of different things can be going on on the outside, we really need to listen for a still, small voice. God may speak to us in big ways. Uh, he might speak to us through a message. He might speak to you through me and my words. He might speak to you through Pastor Stan, some other people that you watch. He might speak to you in a big rumbling voice or the earthquake or the fire like we looked at last week. But he also wants us to really focus on the still small voice that we can hear from him on the inside. So when things are going crazy on the outside, that's especially a great time to look inward and to find out what God has for us. And again, his word tells us that we are his sheep, the sheep of his pasture, when we accept him as our Lord and Savior. And he said, my sheep know my voice. So you know the voice of God. I want you right now, wherever you are, to say out loud, I know the voice of God. Yes, you do. And sometimes it may not sound as clear as we want it to sound, but the more time we spend listening, the more time we spend talking to God, the better we will understand his voice. This week, I want to continue in on prayer. I want to talk more about prayer because it's such a huge, important part, part of our relationship with the Lord. Can you imagine how your friendships would be if you never talked to your friends? Now, when I say never talk to your friends, that means you can't text, you can't Facebook, can't do any social media, can't speak to them, can't sign language or anything like that. How, how can you grow in a relationship that way? How can you become great friends that way if you can't communicate? Well, it wouldn't be very good. Prayer is our communication with God. Yes, he knows everything. He can read our minds, but he still wants us to talk to him. And it's important for us to be able to hear from him. So he speaks to us from his word, the word that we have in the Bible, that's God's word speaking, written uh, to us. But he also will speak to us actually and verbally so that we can hear him uh, and he can tell us about things that are going on right now. So I want to look briefly in Matthew chapter 6. And in Matthew chapter 6, just want to read a few verses to you. Now, this is typically called the Lord's Prayer, what we're going to look at today. It's called the Lord's Prayer, and it's kind of misnamed. It's called the Lord's Prayer, I guess, because that's what somebody called it a long time ago, because this is one of the times in Scripture that the Lord, Jesus Christ, prayed. But if you think about it, uh, as we're going to see, it shouldn't be called the Lord's Prayer, because it becomes, it's actually an example of how the Lord wants us to pray. So I want you to look in Matthew chapter 6, turn over there, swipe there, or tap there, whatever it is that you need to do. Matthew chapter 6, and I want you to look in verse number 9. I want to start in verse number 9. As usual, reading the King James Version of the Bible in verse 9, it says, After this manner, therefore pray ye. So before we get into this verse and this scripture, I want you to know that the uh, disciples were asking him how to pray. This that we're about to read is an answer to a question. It's a teaching that God was given us. So last week we were learning that when we talk to God and when we pray to him, we want to listen for his voice, listen for his response. We should have a dialogue in prayer, not a monologue. It's not just us talking, but we want to hear from God. 
And so he's supposed to be talking to, he says, after this manner. So he gives us like an outline or a template for as a basis for us how to pray. So instead of this being called the Lord's Prayer, it should really be called the Disciples' Prayer because he was teaching the disciples how to pray. He said, this is how you should pray. And this is how I should pray. He starts out saying, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now, hallowed is like a, another word for holy, awesome, wonderful. How great is your name? So he starts out the prayer honoring God. I want to read through it and then we'll go through the different verses. It says, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done uh, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses or our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, that's not the only prayer that we're supposed to pray. We're not supposed to pray that verbatim, verbatim every time we pray. But he gave us an outline to use for us to be able to pray. So when we pray, there are some things in here that should be included in your prayers. Number one, he starts out the prayer honoring God. Sometimes we have issues that we want to go to God about. Sometimes we have issues that we want to talk to people about. And it's not cool for us to get in the presence of whoever it is that we want to talk about and then go right in on whatever it is that we want to talk about. Oh my goodness, can you believe? Blah, blah, blah. And we start talking and just go right into it. Sometimes we might do that because of, you know, the energy of the situation. But that shouldn't be how we always do it or how we normally do it. So when we pray, we want to remember that God is our Father and we go into our prayer reverencing Him, honoring Him, and reiterating his position in our lives. So we start our prayer, Father in heaven, uh, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for how awesome and wonderful you are and who you are in our lives. Whatever it is that you want to say, we start out with honoring the Father in heaven. Then it goes on to say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So he also goes on to say, Jesus is expressing that he wants God the Father's kingdom to come and he wants God's will to be done. So whatever we go to God in prayer about, we want to remember that in the end of everything, we want his will to be done. We want it to be in earth as it is in heaven. How is it in heaven? What God says goes. What God speaks appears. Things that are right are the way that they are supposed to be. So when we are praying, we want to constantly be mindful of the will of God being done. His kingdom is coming and he's given us the key keys to his kingdom. He gives us the ability to act in authority while we're in the earth or upon the earth, gives us authority to do his will. So we're bringing his will into the earth and we want to be mindful that his will will be done. So we don't just go in prayer and say, Lord, I want you to do this. Can you do this? Oh, and can you fix that too? We offer up things to him. We ask him to do things. But again, we want to remember that it is his will that should be done. And when we pray, one of the things we want to find out is what his will is. All right. For those of you that are getting older, you're going to 10th, 11th, 12th grade. Time is coming for you to figure out what you're going to do after you graduate high school. You don't want to find out what you want to do. The best thing is for you to find out what God wants you to do. You want to go before the Lord and find out what his will is for you. Is it to go to college? Is it to go far? Or is it to stay near? Is it to study this or is it to study that? Don't just look at figures and what you feel like and how much they make and what can I get over here? Don't let outward circumstances be your driving factor. Allow God to teach you and show you, this is what I want you to do. There are so many people that go to college and get degrees and they end up never using those degrees in other fields because they find out that's not what they want to do. You can shortcut that whole process by finding out the will of God in any given situation for you. So when we're praying, we want to lift up whatever it is that we are praying about, but we also want to be mindful that God's will be, will be done in the earth. We also say in verse number 11, give us this day our, our daily bread. God has bread for us 
or provision for us or something for us each and every day. And he wants to supply us with what we need. So we honor God before we go into our prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for how great you are. It doesn't have to be deep and fancy and all the stuff, but we want to honor God going into prayer. The next thing we do is talk about his kingdom, his will being done. We want his will to be done ultimately, and we want to find out and make sure that what we're doing will fit within his will. Of course, when we find out it's not, we change what we're doing because his will won't change. And then he says, give us this day our daily bread. You know, God has things for you, but you won't get those things if you don't ask for those things. In another place, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. Um, so when, uh, when, when God is showing us things, when God is leading us, guiding and directing us, he wants us to receive what he has, but we have a role to play in receiving that. So we're asking father, I'm expecting your provision that you have for me today. I pray and ask you that you would lead me and guide me through this day. Show me what I need to see, help me, protect me and things like that. So those are just the first three things that I want to go through because I'm running out of time. Next week, we'll go through the rest of the disciples prayer and a way that we can pattern our prayer life off of what Jesus said. So as you, as we conclude this part, which you can begin to add to your prayer life, if you haven't already, is make sure when you start out, you acknowledge God and who he is and how great he is. Next, acknowledge in prayer and also in your mind that everything we're doing is for God's will to be done in the earth. And next, we expect and ask God for our daily bread, our daily provision, or the things that he has for us in that day. That's about all I have for you to get from the word. We'll go on uh, to the next part next week. I miss you guys. I can't wait to see you again. I'm glad to see some of you all at church when we meet in person over at Birch Elementary. Let's do a Zoom call this week so we can get on there. We can talk. We can hang out. Hopefully, we'll be able to do a lunch hangout really, really soon. Uh, but today, Sunday, uh, we want to do our Zoom call today at 6 o'clock. All right, so 6 o'clock on the dot. Log into Zoom. We'll just get on there for 15, 20 minutes. Just say what's up. Talk. See how things are going. See how this word is impacting you or not. And we'll kick it there. All right, I hope everything is great. Can't wait to see you again. Want to see you today on Sunday at 6 o'clock when this airs originally. That's all I have for you, my friends. Tag, you're it.